have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. And as you viewers that are subscribers to our channel knows, uh, we're trying to go full time. And I've had a couple of obstacles. One I keep on mentioning over and over again, and that's my truck. The truck, it'll last us the rest of this season. <laughs> and we'll start looking maybe for something for next season. The truck that I would like to get is basically an older body style Ford like I currently have and then uh, it'd be in with a big block gas engine in it. It'll tow pretty much everything that's out there and we could then make we can make decisions if we want to go into a bigger camper then. The truck, uh, it pulls the camper and it does a great job. It's just working it harder than I want it to. Heidi knows. I mean, you can feel it in the brakes. When we go around corners, it pushes the truck in a weird way. I actually had some sway go on. That truck, being that it's a eight foot bed, extended cab, um, I can't believe that I had some sway going on at highway speed. Yeah, our camper is definitely too big, too heavy for this old truck. Uh, the way I've got it loaded right now, it's probably about 40, 800 pounds yeah about 4800 pounds and then in the back uh, both the mopeds they're about 80 not well about 90 pounds and almost 100 pounds so uh, then I got a cooler I don't know I probably have about 400 pounds in the bed of the truck and then uh, Heidi and I so you can add a little bit more to that I remember the last time I added up when we had firewood and our coolers full of food and ice uh, it was way over the gross combined vehicle weight, so. Now for the subject that we've been talking about almost every single video, and we're gonna continue to talk about it because it's still a major issue. That truck of mine just isn't going to do it. It is a good running, powerful truck. It's just too small. It did a good job on the way up for the most part. However, the engine worked pretty hard and it got to where I was only averaging, I think I figured it out, and I was maybe nine miles to the gallon at the best. Uh, maybe closer to high sevens or eight even. And that just defeats the whole purpose of having that smaller engine and a smaller camper, because if I had a, a big block truck, it would get about eight miles to the gallon, and it would pull, and I wouldn't even know it, the trailer was behind us, so. The truck's an issue, we're looking. Our, our goal is definitely to get into another truck. So you're gonna see a video one day on here of us having a, a new truck or a, a different truck. One day on here of us having a, a new truck. One day, one day, one day, a new truck, a new truck, a new truck. My poor truck is just a small block and it does everything it can to pull that camper whenever it's fully loaded and that camper weighs out about eh, about 6,000 pounds when it's fully loaded. So the truck's been doing a good job. It has 195,000 miles, but I need something that's going to handle mountains and hills a little better once we go full timing. So guess what happened? That's what happened. Yep, that's right. We finally got a new tow vehicle or new to us. Now this thing's not perfect by no means and there's a bunch of stuff that I need to do to it. But most importantly, this thing will tow that camper without it even knowing. This is a 1997, that's the last year for this body style, F-250 and it's a heavy duty. It has a full floating rear end, it's a 410 gear. Not only does it have a bumper pull hitch that is brand new, but it also has fifth wheel hitch rails already mounted in the bed. So if I wanted to do a fifth wheel, I could do that. Now, some of the things I need to do to it. Get rid of this Chevy cap that's on there. What were they thinking? I'm not one for having the wrong cap on a truck. It doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna take the cap off of this truck, drop it off at the body shop, and get it painted this color so it matches this truck. The truck overall is in pretty good shape, but I'm not a big fan of running boards in Northeast Ohio because they have a tendency to hold salt and water and cause the thing to rust prematurely. 
let's go ahead and take a look at the interiors. You can see this is my old F-150's interior and I have a console that I bought for it some time ago and it's getting beat up pretty good because there wasn't a console. And it has an airbag uh, for the steering wheel which they all had on the F-150's that year. And I added a tachometer, I added a backup camera, and an aftermarket stereo. The aftermarket stereo and of course the GPS and the CB is all going into the new truck. Let me show you what that looks like. You can see the interior's got a couple cigarette burn holes, no big deal, not here for show, I'm here for go. But it already has a console that's built in and it has a tachometer from the factory, so I don't have to worry about that. It does have a brake controller, but I'm taking that brake controller out and putting in my Takancha because it's much better. The stock stereo will come out and that stereo that I have in that truck over there will fit in here just fine. As far as the interior overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, the seats are pretty comfortable and uh, it's funny because now that we don't have kids, those seats are easier for passengers to get into the back seat. Well, I don't have anybody riding the back seat anymore. I just like the extra leg room. The most important thing about this truck by far, this is a big block 460 engine. It is the biggest engine that you could buy in this chassis. The engine that I have in that truck is actually one of the smallest engines you could buy for that chassis. If you don't know the difference between the two trucks, this is an F-250, which is a three-quarter ton. The F-150, of course, is only a half a ton. This truck will tow 12,800 pounds while this one will only tow 6,900 pounds. This truck here has a 245 horsepower big block that has 400 pound feet of torque. This one has a 205 horse small block that has 275 pound feet of torque. This engine in this truck is almost identical to all the engines that are in any motorhome that was made from 1998 and prior all the way back into the 70s. This is a 460 engine or what they call the 7.5 liter gas engine. This engine here is a 302 which started out years ago in the 60s in Mustangs as a 289 that eventually got increased to a 302 cubic inch in the late 60s. So the technology in both of these have been around a really long time, but that 302 is meant for light duty use. It's a good horsepower engine, not a good torque engine. This one here is made for pure grunt. Its peak torque happens at 2200 RPMs. This one's peak torque happens at about 2600 RPMs and it's a hundred pound feet less than what this one has and it's in the same chassis. Now I've done a lot of work on that F-150 to get it tow ready and it does a good job and it's a very good truck. There's a lot of things on it that I wish that this new truck had or at least had new so I know that it was already done. My truck's already had the transmission filter and fluid change and flushed. It's been done a couple times since I've owned it. I've already changed the rear differential fluid in it. I've already lubricated every point on the truck. I've also put a bigger heavier duty capacity radiator in my old truck. I've got a better ignition system on my old truck. I have a better air intake system on my old truck. I have a better exhaust system on my old truck. I wish all those things were compatible to where I could put them on the new truck, but they're not. So I'm gonna to have to go through a lot of things to make this new truck feel really comfortable for me to be able to drive it cross country. It does have the need for me to go through and look at everything to make sure that nothing's getting ready to break and there's no problems. And there's gonna be some upgrades that I need to do also. The main thing that I have to do right off the bat with it is it has a exhaust manifold leak on the driver's side. So I'm gonna to have to pull that manifold. I expect to break some bolts off in the head. So then I'm going to have to tap and drill the head out to get those bolts out to extract those bolts that break off. And that's a lot of work. 
but it's not anything that I haven't done in the past. We're one step closer. I wanted to share this with you guys to let you know that you're not going to hear me bitching so much about my old truck and how it's not doing the job. Now you're probably just going to hear me bitch about how I need to do work on the new truck. Nonetheless, it's going to do the job a lot better than that old one. Well, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you out there. Bye.